recording. All right. Um, so just a little bit of introduction. I'm Debbie Plowman. I'm the uh, director of the Coastal Bend Regional Science Fair. It's one of my many hats. Um, I'm also a um, site professor for the uh, field-based instruction, and I also teach math to um, prospective teachers at Texas A&M University. Um, Alyssa Mejia is our um, communications, and she's also really almost co-directs with me a lot. Um, she couldn't be here with us today. Uh, we have Norma Swanepoel, and she's, um, you want to turn on your face and say hi, Norma? Maybe she doesn't want to. Okay, well, Norma is our administrative assistant, and um, she's going to be the major person you'll encounter um, pertaining to invoices and um, setting up your school um, so that we have proper payments. And last year, she did a really great job in making sure all the kids had um, their, um, their virtual projects submitted. So she's kind of awesome. Uh, Linda Chisholm, also awesome. You want to wave over there? She's, um, we've had her every year as a consultant, um, mostly on a volunteer basis. And um, she's been uh, helping a lot of us with Scienteer, especially, but also she's been an avid science fair uh, supporter, volunteer, judge. She's judged all the way to the international levels. And um, she's just an overall awesome science fair expert. And then we have Trisha Boyson, who's new, and you can see her picture there, if you want to say hi. Hello. There's Trisha. She's um, the newest member of our team, and um, she's a graduate student at Texas A&M University, and she, uh, her primary role right now is helping us with our research, and then as we get closer to science fair, she'll be supporting Norma and uh, making sure that all the virtual boards and such are ready. Um, we also want to thank our sponsors. Um, Valero is our title sponsor, meaning they um, give the most money and have been with us the longest. We really appreciate their support. Uh, Texas A&M is co-sponsor. Um, they sponsor part of the salary I get and um, Norma's salary. And they've, they've given us Trisha as a graduate student and also the site where we have face-to-face -face when we have that. And then our new uh, sponsor is HEB. Last year, they donated enough money. And the primary use of that money is to make sure everyone gets a t-shirt. And so um, that should continue. And I'm really excited about the coordination of all those wonderful sponsors. If y'all know anyone else that wants to donate to Science Fair, send them my way. Um, so I'm going to take a minute to uh, ask you to tell us about yourself. This will give us a record of who's attended and it'll help us build our database. We will not contact you unless um, it's a, a direct announcement about Science Fair or share your email. And uh, if you don't want to give us your email, you can put that in the part that asks for email. So if you look in the chat, there's a link. Oh, wait, that's the wrong link. Um, in the middle of having that link saved, I had to go make a fix. So let me get that Google form. I think it's on my slide, actually. Let's see, pause share. Um, sorry, uh, I've lost the link and I'm going to find it. Here it is. Okay, the next link that you see in the chat will be the link that we want you to use to register your attendance. It says HTTP forms. If y'all would click on that and fill out the an attendance form, we'll give you about two minutes to do that. Okay, um, Linda, can you see the, um, the PowerPoint with the girls on it? So just a little annotation. Um, this is from a visit that I did in 2018-19 um, out at Alice ISD. They're um, a pretty high participating district. 
um, I, I got excited and took the pictures and I asked permission to share. Um, one of my favorite things about science fair is the um, cross pollination between families and um, the excitement that families have for their students when their students are participating. Uh, it's a, it, it was a really, it's a really nice fair and I, I hope that you guys have the nice uh, local fairs as well. Okay, I'm just gonna check on the Google form and see I've got two responses. And uh, Linda, just side note, were you able to email Nancy? I, it came back undeliverable. So I just ch checked that. You might wanna see if you can try it on your end. Okay, so while you guys are filling that out, um, try to get help one of our participants. I'm going to send her the link directly. Sorry. Okay, just one more minute to give y'all time to fill out that little form. Oh, we are recording it and we will post the recording probably with a few edits to get this part out. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on. Um, why should we do science fair? There's a lot of research, um, both supporting and not supporting science fair, but um, Okay, sorry. Can the rest of you see me? Okay, because um, Trisha is telling me she doesn't see the the slideshow. Do y'all see the slideshow? Yes. Okay, I don't I'm know. See. So I don't know, Trisha, if you want to log in and log off. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so the um the science fair supports the sciences so especially when you have science fair if you have one in your classroom or you have one in your school or you have one in your district or you have one at the regional level it invites um the community to get excited about science um it integrates subjects and topics so if you've ever supported a student doing science fair you notice there's a lot of mathematics there um it's not just um one single thing, uh, the scientific method and processes are highly involved. Um, it's a hands-on, minds-on project. Oftentimes, it's the only time students at young ages actually conduct a science fair from start to finish. It should include um, some of their original ideas and what they're curious about. Um, it also helps them uh, think about science communication, public speaking, and, and engagement. Um, if they're doing team projects, it also works on those kinds of skills. There is some study studies that show that students who participate in science fair regularly, um, uh, it leads to uh, successful STEM careers. Um, it should serve as motivation and encouragement. One of the detractors of science fair is being a little too um, prescriptive. That's not helpful. And there are some studies that show that forced participation uh, can have a negative effect. So as you start to use um, uh, science fair as a way to get kids interested in science, remember that's your primary goal. So they may go home and not have the kind of support they need or materials and supplies and that puts a stress on parents um, or the parents don't understand what is expected. Um, and so there are some things you can do like giving some class time during school, uh, after school support time and then finding supports for supplies. Most parents want to support their kids in science. They just want to know what it is they're supposed to do to do the best uh, for their kids. 
Okay, we have a new participant. I want to make sure she's on and knows we're recording. Uh, welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Sorry, I was a little bit late. That's okay. Um, I want to tell you that we are recording the sessions. So I'm just letting you know. And um, so it's your choice on whether you want to turn on your video when you talk, if, uh, if you want to ask a question or you want to just stay kind of anonymous, that's fine. Um, and then I'm going to put into the chat our registration link. We're just trying to keep a record of, of who is here. Um, we won't contact you unless it's direct information about the science fair. So if you look into the chat box and click on that, if you could fill out our form, that would be awesome. Um, so where are you from, Jennifer? I'm from Flower Bluff ISD. Oh, cool. Yeah, Carrie, you have support. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome. And um, we just got started. We had a little technical difficulties with a few of our participants, so you haven't missed much. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, I'm going to talk about, do an overview of the Coastal Bend Regional Science Fair. Some of the resources I'm sharing, you can share with parents if you want to get them excited. You want to make sure that all parents and students know the website. Um, anyone is uh, allowed to contact us on our email if they have questions that you can't answer. Of course, they should go to y'all first. Um, and also, I just want to show off one of our last year's participants, Sharmada Falakurthy. She um, is a seventh grader, right, Linda? And um, she had a terrific project about testing for diabetes. Uh, yes, she in animals. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so um, she uh, she won uh, best best division best in show uh, for junior division, and she also won the overall fair award of a thousand dollar scholarship. Um, she was the first place winner in her category at state, and she was a Broadcom finalist. Um, so we do have some really great kids, and I will say that anyone who participates. Um, has a good time and, and feels uh, good about science, but we do have some pretty awesome winners. Um, I just want to remind people that the junior uh, senior division is held on January 29th with projects due uh, two weeks before that. Um, and it will be virtual. We are modeling after the state science fair. So state uh, winners will go through a virtual fair in the first phase. Um, and they are planning on having face-to-face -face for uh, finalists. Uh, the elementary division in April, it's on hold as to whether or not it's face-to-face -face or virtual. We're investigating the possibility of still having a face-to-face -face with that one, but we're definitely having one in April, either face-to-face -face or uh, virtual. Uh, this year for junior senior division, we are planning for um, interviews. So students will have a chance to talk directly to judges. Last year, if you participated, you might have remembered that we had to have our fa uh, fair at the end of the freeze week. So well, there was no way we could have had the face-to-face um, -face interviews we were planning for because too many people were out of power. A lot of people that were judges were still in freezing homes during that time. So good on us, we did good last year, y'all. Um, so I just want to give you a quick look at the um, Science Fair website that is hosted at Tamu CC. Um, give me a thumbs up if you've gone to the website before. Oh, Nancy Montez is with us now. Okay, I just want to show you the website, especially because um, it is has been revamped and reorganized. Um, just to make sure that people know where things are. Okay, can everybody see the Science Fair website? All right, so the link is still the same, but we have um, a new uh, website design across the university. And so we have little boxes that hold all the information that was there before. Um, one of the most important places to go is the fair details right here. Um, so we'll keep updates there. What you see here is a list of dates. And right now, um, 
<clears throat> we're on the November 20th webinar. Um, in December, we will open up the registration for participants in the regional fair. Um, those will be sent directly to um, coordinators and lead teachers to share with their students who um, they know should be participating in the regional fair. We don't make that link public because we want the students to go through their schools and teachers and processes before they come to our fair. Um, you'll notice that January 15th is the registration and payment deadline. I know a lot of you have a long Christmas break, so just be prepared for that. Um, the payments will come from districts um, and we, Norma especially, will be monitoring uh, the payments from districts and making sure that everyone is paid for it. But registration will be, um, uh, it needs to be submitted. It's a lot of organization to get ready. So please pass that along. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> it's on the 29th, um, all of the activities that students will be involved in. And then if you, um, we do have quite a few students who get invited to go to the state fair. So um, there's some deadlines there. And our next meeting on the 11th, and our after school meetings in January, we'll go in more detail about that. Should a student win, we also have some after school um, webinars for the students and their parents and teachers to attend to give more information. Um, if students are, if they make the round two, um, they will get to go to Texas A&M University. Um, schools don't normally um, help support that. Each school is different. Um, and that is where they'll get to compete face to face, but they have to make it to round two. So round one will be a replication of what they're doing with us at the Coastal Bend. They'll have a submitted virtual board. Um, they actually will not have, they will have a live interview. They've gone back and forth with it differently. We'll be able to submit a four minute video. Um, but as we get closer to those kinds of things, we'll make sure that um, people involved know what is going on. Um, the other, so as you can see here, there's all sorts of links for judging. Um, we have not put up the volunteer link, but that's coming up soon. Um, if, if you wanna get parents excited, we have a lot of awards and photos from the previous years. Um, you want to let Beth in, Bethy Nosa? Uh, I think the one that's here is probably the most helpful for you guys when you're starting off. So um, ideas for getting started and organized, we're going to hit that a little bit later. But um, if you're looking for ideas for science projects, you can send um, your um, students and teachers here. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit later about the importance of safety. Um, and what kinds of projects need to have a red flag for further inspection before you allow your students to go on. Um, so we're gonna return to this website as we go through the webinar for different reasons. And um, the, what we wanna do right now is show a video and um, let me get it ready and then I'm going to ask. Okay. Um, can y'all see the science fair video kind of coming up on your side? Okay. Um, I'm going to share and make sure that I'm optimized. Okay. So we're just going to take about one minute to, to look at this video. And this is from the 2019 fair when we were live. My science fair project is the Boba Kiki effect. My project is called Our Child Proof Containers Really Child Proof. Um, so, so people could know um, what toothpaste to use so they can have clean tea. Well, we have a theme for the fair. It's called the love of science. And we picked that theme because our first day this year was on Valentine's Day. This year we have 28 schools and districts, tiny ones. We have a really small school district that only has about 800 kids. And then we have Corpus Christi District. 
Um, so it pulls all those people together. My question was, how is air pressure inside the ball related to the distance the ball will travel? Uh, we also have a ton of students that volunteer. I am a science major, so I kind of see around the university if there's anything like science opportunities, volunteering events, and this was one of them that happened to pop up. So my science project was about how lemons can light a light bulb. Yes, I've been assigned the third graders and just seeing how much they learn and how creative they are with their uh, materials has really impressed me. I love doing life science and behavioral science because it helps like solve some of the problems that we have in the world today. Science Fair pulls families, schools, the community together because it is a big group effort. I was just going through the websites looking for projects that have to do with like the brain because I find that very interesting. And science Fair is a great opportunity for the whole family to get involved in science. I think people shouldn't be scared of science or even scared of science fair. Um, they should investigate questions that are of interest to them and work with their science teachers and parents um, to kind of figure out how to answer their questions and stay curious. I think it's fun. Okay. So I'm going to pause right now to um, ask if we have any questions. I have a question, Dr. Plowman. Yes. Okay, you said uh, earlier that the um, registration was due on the 15th and the, the science fair is the 29th and projects are due two weeks before that. Is that correct? They have to have their project completely submitted two weeks before the 29th. Yes. Now, I think that um, I'm going to have to check in with districts. One of the things that has been uh, a little bit of a struggle for us is that the state fair uh, deadlines necessitate us to have our fair earlier. And so it makes it tight for you guys. So um, when, when is Far Bluff having their fair? Well, we were looking at the 13th, but that's not gonna give us time for our winners to make sure that they've got everything completed through Scienteer before they have to submit their projects. So. Um, I guess we're going to have to have our fair a little bit sooner than that so that they'll have time to polish and, and shine and get everything submitted to you guys. So, Carrie, one of the things that we in an ideal world would like is that Science Fair was finished by the time your students register. But we are willing to make exceptions. We don't want to injure um, a student's ability to do a really good um, science fair. Um, just because they're having to rush and do it. So um, try to meet with us and we can we can talk about what uh, what level of science here um, information needs to be in for sure by the time they register and what can be finished before the actual fair. And will they need to submit then their PowerPoint, uh, the slides by that date as well? Um, so that is pretty important. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute about. OK, OK. Um, and kind of give suggestions for um, teachers who are in charge of how to facilitate that so it is painless. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh, good question. Okay, any more questions before we go on? All right, so I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint and um, at some point someone else gets to talk like now. So um, this is a good time, Carrie. We're gonna talk about science here. Um, and we're gonna talk about some important issues about students who need particular pre-approvals and um, some things to watch out for. And um, we're gonna talk about the completion levels of science here and um, what could be possible for folks who are having their science fair just now in January. I know that Corpus Christi is not having theirs till January either, their district fair. So we are willing to be flexible. One thing we, I'll just say this up front, one thing we desire is that all students competing in our fair are at least in sign, at least in sign tier to the, uh, I don't know, about a fifth level. So they're in, their parents have approved, they have their uh, project plan in and, and so on. Because one of the difficulties after science fair is if you are a winner, 
we only have two weeks to get all that ready to make sure you are ready to go to state. And we have to look at it and give our own inspection of everybody's before they go. So um, if they haven't even started, there's it really is kind of chaotic. So we, um, as Linda goes through, hopefully it'll familiarize you enough so that you'll see it as a, a support for students to develop their projects and not as a, a totally extra job. Um, that it can actually, if you use all the materials and the uh, submission, um, the, the things that they ask for submission, it actually just supports them to have a really good project for your own fair. Um, all right, so I'm going to let um, Linda take over. You want to share your screen and sure. share, uh, talk about that science here. And we will do more on science here on the 11th. And we are also available to do some one on one tutoring if you need that. Okay. Um, with science here, what is science here? So what, what Dr. Plowman was saying is that science here is not something completely different that the students have to do in addition to their project. It is a housing area and it's an online database management system for their project that they're already completing. They remind the students that they're not doing science here. They're doing a science project and that science project is placed in science here. And you, the teachers, can review their projects. You can look at their projects as they're going along. The students can go back in and make any changes. And it's easier to have the forms there for the students instead of having to go out and try to go through all these different books to find the forms. Scienteer will guide the students through all the process of their forms. First thing I wanna talk about is, do you need an SRC or an IRB before you do experimentation? It, it depends. Uh, it depends on your student's project. And what I'm gonna do is go through this very quickly. And at the end, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to take those. The student projects that need an IRB or an SRC, the IRB is the Institutional Review Board. Human participant studies. This is anything that the students are doing on a human or with a human involvement, such as a survey or anything physical or having them do something in the classroom or looking at the students themselves. Example that I always like to give. Yes, ma'am. I was going to say that even if a student decides they are going to experiment with different kinds of running shoes to see which ones make them jump higher. They're experimenting on themselves, so that's a human participant. Absolutely. Uh, one thing I like to um, give the example of is if you have a student that goes and sits on a park bench and counts the number of people with red shirts and the counts the number of people with green shirts, never talks to the people, never interacts with them, never writes any of their information down and does not do it on themselves, that is not requiring an IRB. If the student sitting on a park bench uses themselves, or if they stop people and say, do you mind what your favorite color is, red or green, then they've involved the people and there's more steps to follow. The, I'm gonna get to that a little bit later on as well. Uh, students have to have forms, one, one B and four and a consent, and they may need additional forms. A scientist will guide them through that so that as they're doing their project, they'll see that information. School administrator must be on the IRB board, the medical health professional. This year, they're being more specific on having a minimum of an RN before they've allowed other people that were not at that level to be the medical professional. So be very careful with that. Educator is anyone in the class, anyone in the classrooms or anyone you know who is an educator cannot be someone who is involved with the students directly. So you as a teacher or another student's classroom teacher who's doing the project cannot be in, in the IRB. All members will sign the paperwork. So the Linda, S for example, in Flower Bluff, Carrie is going to be the teacher of a lot of the students. But if she got another teacher, say Miss Ruffall, to be on the IRB, if both of them are on the IRB and students projects come in, just one of those people would recuse themselves from approving the project, right? Yes, but it is much easier 
for you not to be on the IRB at all. Because once it gets to the state SRC and IRB review team, which I'm part of, one of the things we look at is, was that educator also a teacher or signed something or was part of the process? And if the answer is yes, then we do not allow that SRB, uh, that IRB or SRC to continue. So the best thing is to not have yourself on it at all and to find another teacher that will do that. Now, it does not have to be a teacher at your school. So if you know someone who's a teacher and they are willing to help out, please, they're, they're welcome to, to do that as well. If you need some help with finding a teacher or an administrator or a health professional, reach out to the Coastal Bend Science Fair and we'll help you find that. Uh, Science Review Committee, vertebrate animals, and potentially biological agents, including mold. Mold, I'm gonna I'm probably, you'll probably be tired of hearing this, but mold cannot be done at home. If a student does a project with mold at home, they will be disqualified. And that is a state rule as well as an international rule. They can gather their mold, mold at home and then take it to a laboratory. And if you have a student doing a mold project, we ask you to reach out to us and let us know how they're gonna go through that process so we can let you know in advance if it is one that is potentially going to be disqualified or not before the student gets to competition. The vertebrate animal, the SRC, biomedical expert. This needs to be someone in the biomedical field. If you need someone in that biomedical field, just let us know and we can again help you find someone there. That one's a little bit more flexible with the state committees because those are difficult to find. An educator, again, so another teacher, and one other member. People can serve on both the IRB and the SRC. So you don't have to go find completely new individuals. Students have to have the, the forms, one, and then they may have other forms. If you have any questions, this link right here is the um, book. It's the handbook for Regeneron. And in that handbook, 49 pages, it will give you step-by-step -step information on the SRC and the IRB. So I just want to add that as a science teacher, you may be recoiling from thinking about, you may even want to tell your students, don't do these. But um, the forms themselves are mostly pre-filled out. And it's just a matter of making sure that students are safe and that anything involved in their, experience, in their experiment is safe. Um, and note that it is vertebrate animals, non-vertebrate animals. What would that be? Bugs? Ants? Bugs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I do encourage these kinds of experiments because they are really good, but just if you know ahead of time that they need approval, um, you won't come to that bump in the road later. Great. Okay, the next one is the human participants. This is one where you really want to pay close attention to. It's one of the red flags I'll also discuss in a minute. Form four, which is the form that you see on your screen, you do not have a non-applicable. You can't say that it, nothing applies because then you wouldn't have that. Any online surveys, the students need to be very careful because they still have to get consent for an online survey. So they can't have the mom and dad go put it on Facebook and get 500 people and not have 500 consents. Now we have seen students in the past at the state and the international level who've done that through Facebook and they have put their survey on there which locks once they get to the survey, gets the consent on the survey and continues and that is acceptable. But you can't have the general survey on Facebook. 2022 has some new stipulations and I will get into that in a little bit. And those are really important, especially at the high school level for students. This is a chart that was created by the Texas State SRC lead. And she has all of us on the state SRC team use that. And so I put it in here for you. It shows new things that the SRC teams are looking for. And it also shows things that we've had in the past, but we're now requiring them and not making any exceptions to that. It's engineering. We have more spots for engineers this year in what we're requiring. Wait, wait. Can we go mm -hmm. through those, please? Go through those? Sure. Yeah. Yep. Let me get back to that, and I will be happy to go through that. Back button. Mm -hmm. oh. my, that's just because my back button is kind of hinky here. Okay, 
So if you're looking at these project types, you're looking at engineering, explanation of computer software created by the student researcher. And they had 20 students test the software once it was done. That form four, that human form is required because other students touched the project. Computer software cre created by the student researcher where the researcher and the teacher tested. That one is exempt. That's different. If you'll notice when I told you that if the student touches something in another experiment, they're required to have form four. But in engineering, they are exempt if they test it and then their teacher tests it as well because the teachers are considered mentors in the engineering field. Engineering where the student created a system where the video game only works when you use a bicycle and the teacher and the researcher test the system, it's required and that's because of physical exertion. So form four would be required. The next one is blood pressure tested while playing different video games. The researcher only is doing it. It's required to have a form four because they physically did something that could change themselves. So that is required. And the last one experiment is bacteria cultured from the hands after using different hand sanitizers. And that's the researcher themselves went out and got different hand sanitizers, tested on their hands, put it in an agar plate, and then test culture the bacteria. We are assuming that the student then took it to the laboratory or did it in the laboratory. Uh, they are required to have that form four, again, because they physically did something to themselves. Those are very critical that you pay attention to. And there's more information, again, in that handbook, as well as from us, as well as on the Scienteer website that I'll get into in a minute as to where you can find that information. But that is a really good resource for you. You're welcome to share that with your students as well. This, any, uh, anything I do. Linda, um, I want to point something out and tell me if I'm correct. So um, during the process of putting in things in Scienteer, one of the things the students will do is they'll put a little couple of paragraphs with their plan and they'll put their hypothesis. And at some point, they'll get to this question. And what happens at that point, correct me if I'm wrong, um, they actually download a physical copy of it and then they upload it as a PDF. A physical copy of what? Of the forms. The form no, they, you, saw, you, saw, you showed on the other side. Oh, the uh, form is, is auto-generated and they don't have to um, download that or and then re-upload it. It'll be auto-generated on sign too. So if you need uh, someone to sign that form, do you send it through email and they sign it electronically? No, that will be sent, sent through a link on Scienteer where the students will get to a certain point and it'll say show, it will show the link and the students can click the link and it will be sent to who they have listed before. If they have not listed someone before, they can copy and paste that link and send it to the individual who will then be able to open a new screen and agree and that will be repopulated onto the Okay, form. and is there, um a way if someone wants to just download the form and have everything signed physically that they can upload a PDF or does it all have to be electronic? All has to be electronic. The forms must all be electronic. If any of your students are having problems with that or the links or you're having a difficulty with that, reach out to us and we can go in and look at the forms and see if everything has actually been populated correctly. Sometimes people where the links are sent to, those individuals say, oh, I don't think it went off. I don't think I sent it and they resubmit it. And the student ends up with two or three of the same form. Um, you, the, you, the teacher, you, the fair administrator for your school can go in and remove that form. If you don't know how to do that, you can reach out to Dr. Plowman or myself and we can remove that extra form. Okay, That's perfectly fine. That clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is vertebrate animals. Vertebrate animals, again, they require the SRC. They are not as look, they're not looked at as specifically as the humans, but they are looked at. And the one thing that disqualifies students at the state level is euthanasia or injury to an animal, because they'll work in a laboratory where the ultimate of the laboratory is that the animals are either going to pass naturally or they're going to have to be euthanized. And the student does not indicate on their report 
that the laboratory individual did that. The student did not do that. And that's critical because the student doesn't indicate that they did that they weren't part of it, they will be automatically disqualified. If they're disqualified, there are ways for us to go back in and put that information and then they are returned to the to the to the science fair. That's really important. This is form 5A that you see in front of me. This is when the student does a vertebrate form, a uh, vertebrate study, and they have to include a veterinarian if the SRC team believes that they need to. And again, the handbook, you'll see the link right here. This handbook will tell you when you should really include that veterinarian. What I've done in the past is I have told schools, include the veterinarian from the beginning because a veterinarian can help to ensure the safety of the animal and that the project is done well. And there's no question when they get either to the regional or to the state level, whether they should have had a veterinarian, then they're going back and scrambling for that veterinarian. So when, uh, if someone is doing an experiment and they want to know what the favorite dog food is by dog breed, that would be something they would fill out for this, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it's good to even in that case to go ahead and have a veterinarian on standby because if you give the different dog food that then can affect the dog in a potentially negative way and the vet is there and and ready to help if your student does not or you are unable to find a veterinarian reach out to us i have a list of coastal bend veterinarians who've been very gracious to say yes we can do that they have asked that we do not post their information on our website so they don't end up having 20 or 40 or 60 students contacting their office. But we can help you get to a veterinarian or a veterinarian clinic that can look at their project. And that does not have to be, last year we had a confusion, they thought it had to be in their town. That does not have to be in their town. For example, the student had an uncle who was a veterinarian in another state and they asked if they could use him. Absolutely, he's a veterinarian. So, uh, and that is at the very bottom down here in this information. And the students will be shown a designated supervisor or qualified scientist and scienteer. If the SRC team does not believe that all of those individuals are required, the only thing I ask you to do when you're on an SRC team is remember that if, as the student advances, if they're going from regional to state, the state SRC team can say, oh, we think they should have had these individuals. And then it goes back to your school and back to the student who then has to scramble in a very limited amount of time to find those people. So it's better to have all those people in the beginning. And we can help you if you need to find someone. This is a vertebrate animal form 5B that really pertains more to high school students who are going more in depth through extensive laboratory work at an institution or on Zoom with an institution that is going into tissue sampling or is going into something more in depth. Uh, if, you, if the Scienteer program tells you you need a 5B, we ask that you go ahead and reach out to us so that we can help you with what's required in those different steps. And those are different based on every student project. Students may have an IACUC, which is an industrial S SRC team. It's the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee that goes in and they've already done their SRC so that the student can proceed at that institution. And that can take place of your local SRC. But again, if you do more on the beginning, you, your student may not get caught either at the state level or if they've gone on to ICEF where the ICEF believes that they should have had more um, individuals review the projects. Hazardous, potentially hazardous and biological risks. This is where we at the regional fair as well as at the state fair find a lot of students getting disqualified. Main reason is because they have not done their experiment in a laboratory setting. There, I have been asked uh, a couple of questions about the difference between a BSL-1 and a BSL-2. Because BSL they means what? Biological Safety Laboratory. <laughs> the International Rules for College Research book does not specifically go into that much detail. They assume you know that. But what the way I like to tell people is your house would be a BSL-0. Um, your classroom lab, where it'd be like a middle school lab where there's tables and students do the projects and the teacher has a sink or something simple to help kids in an emergency, that would be more like a BSL-1. 
a BSL between a BSL one and a BSL two might be the high school lab where the high school teacher has got more in their classroom to help the student in a safety manner, like an eyewash machine or an autoclave, et cetera. Once you get past BSL, I say one plus, which is the high school lab to two, get in touch with us because we can help you find a BSL three, but we have not seen anyone, I think about four years ago, the ISEF saw someone who needed a BSL three. So that's not really something that you see. And it's really not something we've seen at the international level since COVID because things are shut down and the students can't get into something that would require that much extensive laboratory. And all of this will be on the website for you to look at. So if your mind is rumbling right now, don't worry about it. Next one is other steps. These are for students. Uh, the students can submit their paperwork to the IRB or the SRC, but they have to have completed step one to 10 in Scienteer, even if they're very generic in their information because we have, because of time constraints, that's fine. They don't have to be as detailed as they want to be. They can go back after they, if they've cho been chosen by the district level to go to the region, they can go back in and be more specific. Okay. And so that that's kind of answering Carrie's question. So mm -hmm. um, one of the things I think they'll want to do, and Linda, let me know if this is possible, mm -hmm. as a teacher who will have their name in sign here, can they pretend to be a student and go through all those steps so they can see them? Oh, they can log in as a teacher and look at the student's project as they're going along to see. Yes. Yeah, but. I think it would be nice if let me let me work with Linda, but I think it'd be nice if you guys know ahead of time what I've heard from Dr. Hopkins is that she understands steps one through 10 and she has her students do those offline so that they just mm -hmm. have like a report and they can copy and paste those sections in as they go through. Absolutely. So, and that's I'm everything. glad you mentioned that. That's the easiest way to do it. And then um, they can go to the, the science manual if they need to. So, yeah, so I'm just going to add in Dr. Hopkins. She's on our um, she's on our advisory board, and she was a director. Uh, she also teaches uh, at Texas A&M in addition to um, teaching middle school students about science and um, coordinating their science fair at Kathy Middle School. And um, I think that for Carrie's situation, and probably for most people this year, it would be helpful if we share out. Uh, some sort of Word document or Google Doc that has those first 10 uh, steps because she has all of her students do that offline. And then when she knows who's going to the fair that two weeks beforehand, then they, they're ready and they can quickly complete the sign tier qualifications. And then she is aware of who's going to probably hit on those forms that need approval. So I think, Linda, that's one of the things that we want to do is sure. share out that document. I'm going to write it down right now um, because we're going to have a lot of um, districts, uh, teachers, and students who are pressed for time because of our early date. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that still will allow the teachers as well as the students to go through that SRC and IRB process. Yeah, and it will help every student have a constructed science, science fair project uh, and then maybe limit the number of kids that have to get on sign tier and do all of those other. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's your choice whether if you want every kid to be on sign tier from the beginning or not. Right. So. Absolutely. Uh, and that that really frees up a lot of time for you. Uh, so, yes, I can get with Dr. Hopkins and we developed something like that when we were both Society for Science Advocates. We developed something like and so we can get together and, and fine tune that and put it on the website for you. Okay. Next one is any uh, new school administrators, make sure to, if you're not in Scienteer, means your school is not in Scienteer, to email CBC Science Fair at the regional level. Dr. Plowman will add you into the database and then she will send you the link um, here to register. I put it here, I'll take it off when it goes onto our website so people don't automatically go to that link. But I wanted you to see the link that you will be receiving from her to go in and register your school. Okay. Uh, yeah. Looks like that. So the schools should already be in. 
Yes, yes. And that's why I just went through that really quickly. The next Can one I ask a is, quick question? Jump yeah. on in. Yes. I'm so jump sorry. Uh, we've had a lot, a lot, a lot of transitions. So nobody seems to know where our school account is and what our login is for the administrator for our account. So is there any way we can recover that? Yes. Um, Carrie, yes. if you email me through CB Science Fair, uh, we can, I can even get you with you as early as Monday or Tuesday. I know that's Thanksgiving week, but I can help you uh -huh. find it and I can change the administrator information on there so that you have access. Awesome. Thank you so much. Or just contact me through CB Science Fair because I'll forget. That's <laughs> okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. And then, so uh, if you're an existing school, make sure to go in and update your information in the tools. Last year at the state level, we had some schools that had not gone in and updated and double checked their information. And just like Harry said, she had a lot of administrator changes. Uh, and we'll use her as an example. If she had not gone in and checked that and just continued to proceed, what happens at the state level is if a student is sent back for review, it goes to that fair administrator and signed here. So triple check your information. And after a teacher says, oh, I've added myself into science here, you as a fair administrator, go back and make sure that they did and go back and make sure that they put a phone number and an email address that they can be reached at outside of school hours. Because we, we work on Saturdays and Sundays at the state level and at the ISEP international level. And we constantly find where students miss out precious time because the teacher's waiting till Monday or Tuesday to get back at school and then see the information in their email or their, their secretary is not working on the weekend. So she doesn't get that message from the state or the international. So please make sure it's a local number. That is not shared with anyone. That is pretty. So um, Jennifer, Norman, are y'all gonna need help setting up the junior high as well? I'm actually um, K through four. And so I think Carrie is taking care of the sixth or 12th. Okay, so you, you don't get to be on sign tier. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Um, but our district administrator, um, she is new. She was just asking me about it yesterday. Um, her name is Nicole White. So I'm sure she would like to be involved as well. Okay. Actually, um, I, I'm not, I'm only doing sixth grade. I'm not doing anything other than sixth grade. I'm not yeah, sure who the others are. Yeah, I'm sorry we, about that. <laughs> we, we have, we have you, we got your back. Uh, I, I can, uh, y'all are in our system for sure. And I will change the administrator and um, like I said, get with you after your email and make sure you're able to get started. And that's one thing just to point out, uh, you were saying that you're not, um, Jennifer, you're not uh, doing your, your K-4. So if you're K-4, you can be one of those teachers on the SRC or IRB team. Yeah, absolutely. y'all can trade jobs, be on each other's. And Flower Bluff is a district that reach it just opens their doors to the nursing staff and the principals and the administration to say what do you need us to help you with so um and they've done this for a while so it's a great place to reach out the next one is this is students i'm going to skip it since we don't have any students in here but it's science here videos that we have on our website let me show you that very quickly um this is on our website for students so once you've registered your students they can go to the frequently asked questions. And we have three videos, new student registration. It walks them all the way through from the teacher giving them a link all the way through their parents' registration. Next one walks them through all the way to teacher approval. And the last one is after teacher approval. Uh, students, I would suggest that they get their name in, their teacher name in, they get their parent approval, everything done, even if you're gonna do it offline uh, and then input before the regional fair, partially because it takes a while, you know, teachers for it to go from the teacher to the student to the parent and back. Sometimes that takes eons, but also um, the students will go through a survey on Scienteer, which will help them to know if their project actually meets the requirements, and it also generates their forms. So that will help you know what things do we need offline. Um, so I have something to interject again mm -hmm. about this. So um, 
a couple of things. One of the things you'll want to do at your schools, if you plan on having students input at your schools, is make sure that the school website will allow you to log on to Scienteer because each student, once they go through the process of being approved by their parents, can get on and log on to their own accounts. So Carrie, I know at Bar Bluff Intermediate, y'all have um, the Chromebooks. And so I could imagine you, you know, having all your kids on the Chromebooks and entering their information. Yeah, uh, I, I think that site's already been whitelisted by our tech people. So thank you for that though. And then the other thing that I know that, um, so West Oso has actually, they've done like a parent night uh, for all the students involved in science fair and they have the computers available. So right there in front of them, the parents um, do all their approvals just in case like they don't have good connectivity at home. So um, one of two of our advisory are at West Oso. So if you guys want to know how they did that, we can, uh, I'll try to invite them to be at our December 11th meeting, but you can also contact them directly. Perfect. And That's Carrie, a great idea. Gary, I just added you as administrator while Linda was talking. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Linda. You're doing a great job. Yay, thank you. Thank, no, you. thank you. This is something I, I want to just go through really quickly. And when you get the when you get the video that we from our webinar today, please go back and look at this. These are changes to the risk assessment form. They're changes to human blood and capillary information um, and the requirement of an IRB. I'm not going to go into it because it's very long and complicated. I just want you to note that there are some changes and they are, are in the handbook and that they did a great job in the handbook going over all those details. And we would be here until everyone had fallen asleep if we went over it right now. Failure to qualify projects, human participant projects without reapproval or the right forms. Those will get disqualified at the state level. The state level does not go back and send those projects back for students and teachers to get the right forms. If we look at it at the state level and we say they didn't have the right form or they didn't have a pre-approval, they are disqualified automatically. Vertebrate projects without pre-approval, proper forms, or harm was done to the animal. If we see any harm done to the animal, they're disqualified automatically. If we see no pre-approval or proper forms, again, they are disqualified automatically at the state level. If we see it at the regional level, something that can be fixed, then we work with you to try to fix that before we send it off to the state level. Mold or bacteria done at home, that is an automatic disqualification at the regional level. So they just can't do that. We can't go back and say, oh, we can help you fix that because that's their entire project. And that's a safety issue, uh, especially now during the times of, of COVID and the winter time, et cetera, when different things are coming into the, the air. If we allow mold or bacteria, we're just in, in the home, we're just allowing more spores to enter the environment and not be done in a safe environment. So we will disqualify that automatically. Cultured microorganisms without approval in the forms, those are more at the middle school and high school level. That, again, we had a student at the state level who actually made it all the way up to the state level, but they actually opened up the auger top and counted with their fingers. Don't do that. So That's yeah, I just want to add too, we have some elementary only like Jennifer and um, Patricia. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our students want to do some really interesting projects with mold and bacteria in elementary school. And if you have students look online, they'll see them on Pinterest and so on. So those are the ones you want to watch out for so that they're done properly and done at school. Um, so that they don't get disqualified. We did disqualify someone last year for um, testing dust bacteria and putting it into an ag agar, agar, you know, and having it grow um, because they did it at home. And it was COVID, it was very sad to kind of counsel it. But um, if you have any, and I really would not have anyone K through two doing anything like that. The older kids um, do sort of understand this microorganism idea. And so if you have any questions at all about those types of exper uh, experiments, um, just contact us directly and we can give you some advice to avoid disqualification. One thing I also suggest anyone who's doing mold, take lots of pictures because 
if the people at the region level and we look and say, oh, we think we're going to need to disqualify this, but we see pictures and we see that they've done it in the lab or they've done it properly, then we are we may be like not to disqualify them. We might say, okay, they just didn't write it properly and we can help them write their information for the state level. So tell kids to take pictures so we do have some evidence to try to help them stop from being disqualified because we don't want anyone disqualified. This is an opportunity for students to learn and advance and we want to help them as much as we can. Okay, um, warning flags, save, there's some links for you there. Scienteer deadlines, this is also on our website that talks to you about the deadlines for registration. It says they must be at step 16, but as Dr. Plowman said, this is what we're wanting and we can do it offline and they're ready to compete so that they're ready to go from region to state. Or if you need any help or exemptions from that, just get, contact CBC Science Fair and Dr. Plowman will reach out to you. Yeah, so uh, what, what we'll be doing is as students turn projects in, we'll be monitoring. Um, we certainly um, understand the constraints of having an earlier science fair and that students are barely getting back in January. So um, the steps one through 10 are really what you're gonna be doing normally for a science fair project, such as writing a hypothesis and writing a plan for your experiment. Um, so those shouldn't be hard to do offline and have entered by the 15th, but if you're having any trouble at all um, or having any trouble meeting deadlines, we can work with you. And a lot of students will, some schools say you have to be in science or 6th through 12th grade and we require it by the deadline of the regional. And so they put it into a Word document so then they can cut and paste. And that's also what Dr. Plyman was saying that Dr. Hopkins does as well. Videos, I've, I showed you those. Those are two things on our, one's on our website, the top one, Scienteer, that's on our website that you can go to and watch, the students can watch those three videos. Uh, I will go back and, and update those as we need. And I can also put any videos on there if you say, oh, we're missing forms. Could you specifically put another video on there explaining forms to kids? Reach out to CBC Science Fair, let them know. Uh, and that's, I can go back and do that. That's very easy. But, and then this is in the science themselves under the help section. And now, do we have any questions about, I know I went through that really quickly, a lot of information. Does anybody have a specific question about science that came up in your mind as we were going through this that I can answer for you? Um, yeah, I think what we're gonna do is remind you that we have another session on December 11th. So some of you are here today, we'll get started on science fair, maybe have some more science here and have more questions. Um, also, I see in the chat that um, Jennifer, if you could send me that email and name via, um, if you, could you email me Nikki White's name and email and I will add her as an administrator. I sure will, thanks. I'll add her to all of the schools we have in the system, which is all three intermediate, upper elementary, and um, all right. So, okay. um, yes. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and return this to Dr. Plowman. All right, so um, I'm going to share my screen again. How are we doing out there? It's kind of long. Might be time for a movie. Um, what I think I want to do right now is go ahead and go to our break and give a five minute um, personal break. Um, so we're going to start again at uh, 10, 11, 15. So if you want to go get that second cup of coffee, or as my husband and I say, the coffee break, which is go to the restroom after the coffee, <laughs> um, go ahead and do that right now. And when you come back, we'll talk about the, um, the virtual uh, forms and then some of the resources that are available to you. Hi, everybody. 